those of you on the call, um, if you weren't on the last call, I am Megan Oliveri. I'm your customer success manager um, for your brokerage. And um, I report to Sharice and um, we go over uh, trainings and what the team wants to learn. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to connect with everyone one-to-one -one, um, due to volume, but um, I think you heard me say if there is someone that needs one-to-one -one and that needs assistance, and I'm going to be here to help you because I want you to use the system. We want you to use the system, and we want you to feel like you're not so overwhelmed. So Sharice does have a roadmap, uh, agent roadmap that I made for your team uh, that'll show you there's five areas of time that I feel that you would be beneficial to go into every single day. I made two videos for you, short videos for you to go in and pull some filters so you can um, see where your uh, see where your people are. So I'm going to hop into a live demo. I do have another screen, so I am constantly looking at that screen. So I didn't want you to think I was like watching TV or anything like that. So okay, let's hop in. I am going to stop and take questions um, during a couple sessions or a couple phases as I move through. If you don't have them, you may have them later and go ahead and send them over to Sharice. Um, also, you probably will be very successful in getting the questions answered. In the upper right hand corner, there's a question mark and there is a help center here. These first three actually are a uh, help center. If you go into the help center and you just type in your question, um, it will come up and you can um, probably get the answers to that. So if I type in, you know, property, anything with property or with alerts, you'll be able to see that um, there are uh, uh, mobile, what you'll see on mobile, and then of course, what you'll see on your desktop. So today we're gonna go through property alerts and we're gonna go through smart plans. So I'm gonna tell you that this is gonna be somewhat overwhelming because it's new. Um, have a little grace for yourself that this is not something that you're supposed to get right away. Um, I think that if you spend some time in Chime, maybe like 30 minutes a day, you will find that this will work um, and you will be able to, um, you will be able to utilize the, the system and the fashion that it was built for you to do. So you're not going to use everything in here, but property alerts uh, is something that you'll definitely want to use and Chime or uh, Chime smart plans. I would ask you to at least consider those. If you wanna start with um, uh, smart plans, maybe after a couple of months of being with Chime, then I would encourage you to do that. I also would encourage you to go ahead out to your websites and uh, make yourself register on your website and make yourself a lead in there because that was something to a, a, a client that uh, is not, uh, you know, that you're gonna send them something wrong or uh, something that they don't need. So, okay, so let's get going. I'm just gonna move some things here. Okay, all right. So when you log into Chime, this is your dashboard um, and you're all very aware of that, where we are going to look at uh, property alerts. First, I want to direct your attention towards the settings, uh, the gear shift here. On the left-hand side, you are going to see property alerts right here. So this, I want to be very clear on this. You do not need to take notes today, by the way. I will send you everything that you need in a deck, and you can look at the screenshots, and then you have the recording. I would just look at the screen. Right here are your property alerts, your market snapshots, and your market reports. Your property alerts, you want to go out to your client so they can see what's on the market and it, it is uh, calibrated to their searches and what it is that they want to purchase. If someone's interested in a million dollar property, we don't want to send them you know, a $250,000 property um, and vice versa. Your market snapshot, you're going to get a sense of you know, uh, what's selling in there um, and uh, you know, again, make it relevant. You get to choose what you want, um, you know, location, you know, for the city that they're inquiring about in the market reports. Um, this will give them really a breakdown of what's going on overall, you know, average price in the area that they're looking in, uh, what was sold, 
um, information like that, stats basically is what that's going to be. I would encourage you also that if you have a someone in your sphere or you have a client, let's say that you close, they already closed on a property, I would encourage them to stay on a, a market report just so they can see what's going on in their area. And you can suspend their property alerts, but their market snapshots um, or their market report, I would see if you can get them to, to keep that so that way your branding is there and they could just see what's going on in their area. Uh, I look at one from my hometown in Jupiter, Florida, and uh, I'm always fascinated to see, you know, what's going on and to beach town. So it, it, uh, those prices can, can kind of get up there. So going back to the property alerts tab, when you see this, I'm going to point out some things. When a lead comes into your system, okay, or if you import leads into your system, Chime automatically defaults, or we would like to at least, um, we default the property alerts on. So if I register through Tom's website and I uh, want to receive property alerts, automatically I will receive them if, if, if this box is checked. If that box is not checked, and again, that's through your settings, we automatically default it on. If the box is not checked, what you are saying is, hey, you know what? I wanna stay in control of my own property alerts. And I want to, um, I want to just handpick them, basically. I would encourage you to leave the auto property alerts on so you can get a sense of what your clients are looking at. So that's number one. Number two, exclude pipeline. Now there's a drop down box here. So in this particular one, um, you know, for my demo account, we're gonna exclude properties that are under contract, properties that are closed um, and, and, or clients that are closed and those that do not want to be contacted. So really, um, the, it would be better if you actually exclude some of the pipelines because they don't need them at this point. Um, and you can do the same thing with the market uh, snapshots and the market reports, you know, to exclude who's going to receive the information. So just be a little mindful if you want someone to receive the, um, you know, the market snapshots, then, you know, you don't need to exclude anyone. But I would encourage you to exclude some in here from receiving the auto property alerts. Basically, the rest of them the way that we default them, you can keep them the way uh, that they are. I do see agents that will go through property status and they will like uncheck uh, some of these. Um, you know, those that are contingent or those that are pending. A lot of the times I see it that it will look, um, it'll look like this, that they just want actives and back on the market and uh, uh, coming soon. And I also see where, um, you know, the pending and the uh, contingents are actually on there. Um, keep your open houses no, so you can stay in control of that. Um, you can uh, change location criteria to the same as inquired city or zip code. I would leave that to any. This, your frequency. So I want to be, again, I want to be clear on this because I we've seen a shift in the market. And you all are aware that these properties are going very, very quickly. So I want to explain to you, if you want to send property alerts, the frequency, you can choose daily, weekly, biweekly, monthly, instantly, right? I would encourage you to go with daily. You get to decide, are they going to come out in the a.m.? Are they going to come out in the p.m.? So when we look here on which days we want property alerts to go out to your clients, if you just keep it on a Friday and Saturday, what this says is after the property goes out on Saturday, a property alert is not gonna go out again until Friday. I don't know that that's the best strategy. Um, now, if you have some clients that like it that way, I'm going to show you how you can cater to those clients and make it more customized. But I think initially, you know, if, if you have a potential buyer and they're pretty solid on wanting to buy, then I think that you need to kind of um, increase your days for sending out property alerts. We've seen uh, historically, statistically, that Tuesdays are a very popular day uh, for property alerts to be open. 
um, Thursdays and um, the weekends. So we, we see that. Again, that is just, you know, what our history says, you know your clients, you do what's in the best interest for you because you are the expert in here. I do want you to make sure that um, after you make changes to this, that you make sure that you hit apply. Okay, that is very, very important. Otherwise, these will not uh, take place. Your changes will not take place. And again, it's the same for your market snapshots and it's the same for your, your, your market reports. I would say having something go out, you know, at least once a month for that market report is sufficient. Market, uh, you know, market snapshot, again, you get to choose uh, what you want there because you know your client. So just make sure that you hit apply. I'm going to pause there. Does anyone have any questions in regards to this uh, section? Because we're going to get into more property alerts, but just this particular section and how to set them up. Okay, we'll keep uh, we'll keep plugging away here. All right. So once you have everything set up here, I want to go through and I want to look at some leads. So when you get into your database, right, in your people's page right here, this is where your leads live. And of course, you've got a pipeline, so you can see all your leads here. We can see about 3,800, but we can also see how they are dispersed throughout the pipeline. Please use your pipeline because it'll make it easier when you are prospecting. It'll make it easier to find your people. It'll make it easier when you're dealing with smart plans because with smart plans, I'll show you that you can actually set out a smart plan based off the pipeline. So if you're nurturing, right? and I wanna get these guys over here going, then I can just cater a smart plan that'll send out consistent information just to my nurture pipeline. And we will get into that. So as you get in to your leads, your, your leads are going to, once you connect with them, they're going to tell you what they want. So if I just look at, um, let's see here, if I wanna look at Carmen, Let's take a look here. <clears throat> we go into her lead, right? So in order for a lead to receive a property alert, they need to have a, an email, a valid email, because the property alerts are email to them, right? Um, it is always best if they have the search criteria as well. So we can see that Carmen's a buyer, right? This one, she's in a hot par pipeline. She's got an email address and we can see her search criteria. So I wanna point out that on the search criteria, the edit right here, okay? Just like up here, you can edit for the profile. The edit button will give you six options. These six options, they're, they're bare minimum, right? They're baseline. This is what the client will see when they are out of the website uh, or they were registering on the website and then they float in to your chime. So if you need to make some changes here, you certainly can make some changes here, especially if it's gonna be based right on price. So if I wanted to change it right to 2.5 million, um, I certainly can do that. If I wanted to change, you know, maybe the bedrooms, I can do that. If I wanted to change, you know, the baths, I can, I can do that. Um, I can do things uh, in here, right? But I have to make sure that I save my criteria. So when I do that, I don't know if you noticed, but in the beginning, there were zero matches. But here, this says there's 205 matches. Holy smokes, right? Um, so when you connect with your client, in this case, Carmen, Carmen, you may have that conversation. Originally, I changed the, um, the uh, price because there wasn't anything there. So the conversation with Carmen may be, hey, you know what, Carmen, you wanted you know, 900,000 to a million dollar property in San Francisco. Sorry, you know, it's not going to happen. We need to up, right? So then we get a more increase. Where, what's your max? Where are you willing to go, right? Because we need to find you some properties <clears throat> and they're scarce, you know, based off your uh, location and, and based off your criteria. So we want, want to adjust maybe some things. So if this isn't enough, if 
we need to move out to, let's say, like a different city or whatnot. I mean, again, you know, you certainly can add some things in here, but I want you to get in the habit of opening up these property alerts and kind of drilling down because some of your clients have very specific needs. So, you know, for instance, um, when I look for a home, I like a guest house. I like guest quarters. Um, it's fun. It's an, an additional revenue stream. And, you know, if you have aging parents, then, you know, that is a, a, a second uh, dwelling where they can reside. So some individuals are like that. They want to be on the water. So you may need more specificity in what you're looking for. So as we come in here, now, again, this is a demo account. Typically, what you'll see is when they are on the automatic uh, property alerts, you will typically see under the engagement tab here, because now you're going to engage with them, you will see a number here. It's either going to be zero to three. And the reason why it can go up to three is because there is a property alert, one, market snapshot, two, market report as three. So... Like I said, this is a demo account. So originally it did have a one there, but in kind of playing with it, if the, if the client doesn't want to be on anything, then we can delete it. So if you want to add an alert or add a second alert, whatever you want to do, if you want to edit, um, you can go ahead and you can hit new alert. If there was already a property alert there on the right hand side, it will, you will see an edit button. So if I open it up right here, and I look and I see, okay, you know, three bedrooms, two baths, right? I may have to adjust the location just a little bit, but most of the time it'll be in there. If I put, you know, San Francisco, uh, right? I can put that in there. Maybe, you know, if we're trying to get the price down or trying to get where they want to be, maybe we say, hey, are you? willing to go, you know, into Oakland. There we go. Let's see here. Come on, Oakland. There we go. go. Now, as I'm doing that up here at the top on the right, the results are changing, right? So if I need to change anything in here to be more specific, because I need a specific, you know, district for uh, school, if I need, you know, to exclude some zip codes, you can get very granular in here, property type, you know, maybe I'm only looking at, uh, you know, condos, right? So you can see everything being whittled down because I'm starting to get more specific in what it is that I'm doing here. So as you go through, everything at the top here is going to match as you scroll. It's going to take you into the different areas. So you can see them moving across the top. And again, you know, some of the features that they want, um, you'll be able to, you know, find them. If there's a feature in here that's not here, but it is in your MLS, then please make a screenshot of that on the back end in your MLS to show the filter. And then Chime will go ahead and add it to you and you can send that to support. Always have a screenshot. So after I go through, I make my, you know, I make my uh, uh, adjustments here. I go through, I go to next. I get this page because I am setting the alert because I've talked to Carmen. We've narrowed it down what she wants. We want to make sure that we send her the correct property alerts. We don't want to, you know, upset her in any way that we're, we're not being attentive to her her requests and we're just sending her, you know, property alerts, properties that don't match what she wants. So if I, I'm just going to name this alert, anything I want, San Fran and uh, uh, Oakland. Now here, we typically default some of these settings, but I do want you to take a look at it. Hand pick listings. If you want to set the client up on property alerts, but they say, hey, you know what? Jose, you're the expert. I don't want to get any property alerts. I want you to do it. I would still set them up on property alerts, but I would just choose the handpicked listings because then they're going to go to you. And then you get to kind of whittle through and you get to see exactly, you know, what the options are. And then you can then say, hey, you know what, um, Carmen, I've gone ahead and I have chosen these for you and I'm going to, you know, take a look at them. So you have that option. The other option is that you do have to, you can send a copy of this to yourself. 
you can send the alerts uh, immediately. Um, use listings on the market as supplements. If there's nothing new on the market, it'll just rotate through and send them what's already there. I would encourage you to keep that because they may have missed a property or just not considered it. And maybe it was whatever day they were having, they missed it. But maybe the next day they're like, oh, this is kind of neat. Maybe I should look at that. And then if you want to include any open house info, you can, you can certainly do that um, at times that will be left off just so the agent can stay in control. And then as you scroll down, you'll see, well, who am I sending the email to? You wanna make sure that it's your client. Um, you can customize the subject line for whatever you want. I would, you know, put property alerts, you know, check these out. If you want to put something in the subject line that is like a little bit more catchy, um, people get a lot of emails. So maybe if you want, you know, them to see that, or if you want to put, you know, some sort of uh, some sort of uh, star or something like that, whatever you need to do, it's up to you. Um, how do I want to send these? Again, this goes back to in the beginning when we were setting the auto property alerts, right? From the very beginning when someone enters your chime. Here, they are going to go automatically, but again, you're 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 customizing it. So you decide if Carmen's like, hey, look. I don't want to be barraged with a bunch of this stuff. Just send me property alerts on, um, you know, Thursdays, Fridays, and, uh, you know, Sundays, right? You can set it up like that. Of course, then you're going to go ahead and save it. Yes, you want to sync it because that's going to update the search criteria. And then boom, see that one up here. There's the one. If you make a mistake or if Carmen says, hey, you know what, I really, I don't want to be in Oakland or I don't want to be in San Fran and you need to adjust, again, customize, you can go in here and then you'll see the edit button over here. That's the same edit buttons over here, over here. You can go ahead and you can go back in and then you can adjust and you know, what you need to adjust. I would make sure just that, you know, these boxes are checked and, you know, they're, you know, you can fill them in the field to make sure everything looks correct. And then, you know, go back over, check everything, make sure everything looks good, you know, um, you know, send them immediately and, um, and whatnot. Make sure everything looks good. There you go. Save it. And then you're, you're good to go again. And again, if you don't see a zero here, if you see a zero here, they're not. They're not on property alerts. So make sure you do see a number there. And you do the same with market snapshots, right? You'll do the same. How you want to fill that in, right? Go ahead and whittle it down. Whatever it is, I, I would I would be if you can get a hold of uh, of these clients or if they're in your sphere, I would make sure that you are sending the appropriate uh, information. Okay, so I'm just going to pause there. Questions on that? Seems pretty pretty straightforward. Again, I just want you to make sure that you do see a one here. Okay. And then of course, you know, we have buyer preferences that'll tell you, it'll tell you, hey, you know, they matched, right? And we see this in other parts of Chime. You will notice that if there's a particular client and, and there was a buyer's match. Um, I do want to now show you something, a filter that you can pull a lot of the time. And I also want to show you here in the activity section the system set a property alert. So I always want you to check the activity section because it looked, you know, Carmen registered through branding, right? That was the source. And then the system automatically put her on a property alert. If you edit the details or you take her off or any sort of client, it'll tell you, hey, took off. It'll give you every single piece of information here. If you need to move in the pipeline, right, you can do that. It's just going to show you all of this. So if you're given a lead that someone else was working and, you know, now you're going to work it, I do encourage you to go and to check the, um, the activity section. And again, we still have. 
So don't worry about these so much. Let's just work with this. So I wanna show you that filter. I encourage you to do this in your people's page. I talked about this in the last training. You have these filters that you can run on the left-hand side. In the advanced filter, and I will send you a little video. So you, if you don't wanna go through this video and you're just inter, you just want this, I will show you in a little video clip how to do this. If you go into your advanced filters and you look at, you find property alert. It's going to go there and it's gonna say, do you want to look at clients that are on a property alert, with property alert or without property alert? So I want you to pull every now and again, the ones that are without property alerts because you may be surprised at how many are in there. And you may say, oh my gosh, what's going on? Or maybe there's just a few in there and you're still like, why do I have this? And that should help you decide, should this person be on a property alert? Or maybe I should call them and say, hey, you're not on property alerts. Did they unsubscribe? You'll be able to see that in the leads profile. But I do see this quite a bit where I will go through clients' accounts and I will notice that, you know, a particular agent, you know, they have a high number of no property alerts. And then we find out they never checked the box to enable it, or they were importing and that didn't go correctly, but they are none the wiser. So it's very, very important that you go into your settings, you make sure the boxes are checked. And every now and again, if you just want to check to see who's on property alerts, you can do that. Another quick check that you can do, and I talked about this in the last training, and again, I have a little clip on this, is your columns here. These columns, you could go ahead and you can adjust. So something that I see that um, clients uh, or agents actually don't have uh, checked a lot is this alert button. Okay, I like to see alerts. Everything that was checked there will come up here and sometimes you have to move your scroll bar. And I like to go ahead and I like to move that up a little bit. Maybe I wanna move it right here under communications. You see that it moved because I wanna make sure that I can see who's on property alerts. So if I just take this filter off, right? Cause we were looking at those without property alerts. Then I can see here, right? It's gonna tell me right away who's on a property alert. Questions on that area? Okay, pretty well, straight. Oh, go ahead. Just one question. Um, yes. Um, so in reference, okay, so I got the property alert thing, but my other problem that I'm having is um, like duplication of leads. How do mm -hmm. I avoid that? So like in my email, I'm getting like if, if it's coming in from street easy, realtor.com, and then it comes in through Chime. So I'm getting like bombarded uh, sure. on every single lead. Okay. So I will show you that real quick. So you want to look in your CRM and you can turn off, right? Certain, certain uh, leads coming into your CRM. So what we wanna do is we wanna make it so just those leads come into your CRM. And Christina, we're probably gonna have to look at your email notification okay. um, from uh, the source, right? Where it's coming from to make sure mm -hmm. that we parse um, and it just comes in through Chime. So what I'm going to ask that you do is I'm going to ask that you go into, was it, was it Street Easy? What was it? So it's actually a few of them. Well, oh, just give me one. Just give me one. Uh, one of them is Street Easy. Okay, so Street Easy. So with Street Easy, what you'll do is you'll go into the back end of Street Easy. Do you have access to that? Um, I have to see. I'm sure I do. But yeah. these are their normal syndications from the MLS. Right. So but you probably do have a login and they do have settings inside. Okay. And what you will do is, or actually you can, you know, you can add a, a chime email, you can add an email to it to change, or what you can do is you can just take a screenshot of the email that says to, 
right to mm -hmm. you and then from because there'll be like no reply at or notifications at or alert at and then make sure we can see the body of the email and send that to support and send a note that says hey i'm getting duplicates that are coming into the system you know how do i make that stop but i can okay. tell you here when you go into your settings you have something called lead capture here right. on the left hand side so in that lead capture, there are lead capture settings, right? These are all the places Chime defaults these on. So we will often have what, what you're experiencing and we will go down and we will say, well, okay, so let me go in, let me find, uh, let me find Street Easy. And then, you know, let me turn, let me turn that off, right? Okay. So let's see here. If we don't see it, if we don't see it here, here it is, right? We would just turn it off and then you will no longer get, you know, the duplicate. But what I'd like you to do is I'd like for you to take that email and just say, hey, you know, I just want these to float into Chime, right? And then we'll keep that on. And then you might have to adjust your settings and add, um, I'll find the uh, article for you and add the email on the uh on the uh, street easy side. So I'll get that to you. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Anyone else? Okay. So I also kind of want to show you like is a little bit of a side note uh, in here. Um, you know, kind of a little bit different from property alerts. I do want to make sure like these filters are very important. Every day, I like you for you to go in and to pull some of these filters. So, you know, if I have 318, you know, 300 or, or uh, 3,800 leads here, and I want to work in my contact, you know, I, I still have um, contact working, or if I want to work in my nurture, I still always have like a high amount of leads here. So I'm like, where do I start? Like, what do I do? Well, these filters over here are wonderful because if I want to say, hey, look, I need sellers. I just need to look at my sellers. I can go to lead type and I can see what comes up, right? There's over a thousand, almost 1100 that come up, but that's still a lot, right? So that's, that's still a lot. So then I may want to look at it from the standpoint of, let's see here. I may want to look at all the sellers that registered in the last 30 days. We'll look at that. Now there's 30 of them, right? There's 30 of them throughout. Sorry, the system's not um, pulling it. I may want to look at the ones from last month. There we go. I'll just, you know, you can just pick any reg date you want. And now I have, you know, now I have a whole different, now I have a whole different, oops. Now I have a whole different set, right? Because I have, I have four, right? So maybe I just work those four. So I just want to be clear that you can hop in to these pipelines and you can be very specific and whittle down. Maybe you want to look at a, a specific source, right? Maybe you're paying for leads and you want to look at a specific source who registered last month, right? That are just sellers. So that's why this is very important. But every day, what I'd like you to do every single day is I want you to go in here and I want you to look at your opportunities, and I want you to look at back to site. And the reason why I want you to look at back to site, you can see that you know there's 55 in nurturing, but there's 101 total, right? The reason why this is important is because when you have leads that you're contacting and they say, hey, I'm about a year out or I'm about nine months to a year out, I, uh, you have to stay connected to them in some way. So I often see this filter not being pulled and clients are surprised when I take a screenshot of it and say hey look you got 101 uh, back to sites here you will notice here this is why with your columns I like for you to keep them I like for you to adjust them I like for you to adjust them I like for you to look at your lead score look at when they registered when they last visited and what in the last touch so I like them in this order because if I look at this and I start to look at someone, um, you know, here, let me see if I can find a good one here, like this one, Dave. So Dave, 
he's got a back to site. He went back to site 19 days ago, but I chatted with him eight months ago and he registered eight months ago, but he went back to the site. So if they went back to the site, I may want to talk to Dave and I want, I may want to see what's going on because Dave now might be ready. So that is a good way for you to organize your system and to follow and to follow up. So every day, again, every day, I want you to look at these back to sites, opportunity back to site. You have a filter on it. If you need to get back to your leads, you can reset it. Any questions on that? Okay, you'll really like that. And again, in the roadmap, there is a little clip in there on how to adjust those columns and how to pull those filters. All right, so I'm gonna spend the last part uh, going into smart plans. I don't wanna get too deep in the smart plans because they, they will frustrate you because you haven't seen them. The first time I've seen smart plans, I was like, I can't, I can't even look at it. It just, it's, it's just too busy for me. But once I spent a little time in there, I was able to check it out. I do also have a very short three minute video on smart plans that really kind of gives you the foundation. We do have a longer video that's like an hour, um, but I just wanna give you the gist of it and then just go into that little you know three minute video and then that'll re reiterate um, what I'm talking about. For smart plans, there are times where you want to set it and forget it. And there are times where, you know, try not to forget it. I want you to stay in control of the content that you're sending out to your, uh, your uh, uh, CRM. Because the ones that you're nurturing, we don't want them to say, hey, you know what, this is, this is kind of a pain. I'm getting something every day, um, you know, from, from Seoul. And I don't want to I don't mess with that. And they may unsubscribe and we don't want them to do that. So I want you to be very strategic in making sure that you're looking at these plans. So when you come in here, you have my smart plans, uh, uh, the team smart plans that are gonna be on and then the library. My smart plans are all the ones that you have considered, right? So you will actually add them in here. Most of you will have you know, nothing here. <clears throat> Where I want you to go, is into the library, all right? And we're gonna go into the library. The reason why I want you to go into the library is because Chime has built the smart plans for you. And you can actually alter the smart plans that we built for you. I just want you to see the bones of it so you understand it. Because when you get in and you start, you know, if you wanna add, add a new one, like to make it your own, you can do that. Right. We have some that are built in that, you know, for the holidays and automatically, like if you want to do a, a set it and forget it and you want to do New Year's, you can get in there and you can just say, hey, you know, New Year's and who do I want to target on New Year's? Well, I want to target everyone in my database. It's my plan and it's going to reoccur on a special day every year. And if you want it to end after the first year, you can check that box. But if you want it to go, you know, every single day, then you certainly can just let it go and, and let it roll and you don't have to worry about, you know, anything. And it says, hey, an auto email is going to go out on New Year's Day at 9.30 a.m. to all your people. Subject line, you get to choose. Happy New Year, right? And then you get to upload a picture, right? You get to put your content in there. And if you want to CC family members, you can do that. And then you go ahead and you save it. So it's just as, you know, it's just as, as simple as that. Now, at times, you're going, at times, you're going to have to, you know, create certain triggers and behaviors and whatnot. And we'll, we'll get into that. So then your, that smart plan that we just created, it will fall under here, right? Uh, New Year's, right? Here's the one, but look here. It's not on, okay? If you miss something, if you miss something in here, the, the system will not let you go through. It'll stop you and say, hey, you haven't selected anything. If you need to edit it, you can go to the wheel and you can edit it and you can do what you need to do. If there is specific you know, if there is specific areas that you want to, 
you know, that you want to target and you want to drill down. So maybe you check one of these boxes and say, well, when specified leads have certain behaviors, right? Maybe I want a smart plan for when they request a showing. Maybe, you know, maybe when they return the site after like five days, or maybe I want to target a certain pipeline, right? Maybe I just want to send it to all my nurturers, right? So you can do those types of things and then you can save it, right? Um, so these are just examples of how you can work this from scratch. However, we do have these built for you in the library. And this is why I want you to focus on the library first. <clears throat> so the library, there's all these plans. Do you wanna, I would stick with drip campaign, right? Lead type, I wanna look at my buyers. Scenario, I just wanna go with my, I wanna work on my nurturing folks, right? So maybe all these that are here, curators and marketing partner volumes, you get to choose anything that's here. <clears throat> maybe I want to look at um, oh, new buyer leads, right? Well, if I look at this plan, it says new buyer leads, scenarios, nurturing, it's a drip campaign. I'm only targeting buyers. There's nine steps to it, and it's going to run for 17 days. Right. And if I'm like, well, hey, that looks kind of good. I'm going to import it. So I import it and it opens up, right? Just like the one we saw that didn't have anything. So it opens up. Chime has built this for you. So now you do have the option of just turning it on. Be 1000% sure that you want to turn it on. Do not turn it on first because it's going to go out right away right when you save it. And you don't want to mishandle anything, your branding, nothing. So you be a thousand percent sure that you want to turn this on. So for this particular smart plan, it'll tell you what it's going to, what it's going to do. It'll say, hey, you're going to have a smart plan. There are new buyer leads and the conditions here are they got to be new. They got to be from Zillow and Trulia, Realtor.com, Homes.com. It's picked some of the, the paid ones, right? It already picked it for you. Now, now you come here and it says, so this smart plan is going to auto pause. It's going to stop if you log a call as talked or if the tag that's on it is triggered, um, you know, if the smart plan is deleted in some way. Um, or if the source of the lead changes, right? It's just a different source. I would prefer most of the time, 99% of the time that you check this box too. If a lead reaches out to you, okay? So if, if, if I reach out to uh, Christina and she's nurturing me, right? Or I'm new, well, I don't need to get all the, I may not need to get all, you know, nine steps here. So, because she's probably going to move me into a different pipeline if I'm serious. So, I may not, you know, if I reach out at the third step, I may not need steps four through nine. So, just be mindful of this, and this will be in the deck. So, just make sure you check that box. Now, I want you to look at the body of the email, and this is this is where I want to be pretty clear. So, this says, "Hey." After you save this and turn it on, it, it's going to wait 20 minutes and then it's going to send out an auto email. And here's the subject line and here's what it's going to say. And it says, hi, it's agent. It'll always put your name in there and it'll always sign it for you. Okay. We have these variables and those are over here, but we put them in for you. If you have a template that you want to put in, you can replace this verbiage and you can put this in. If you want to add a picture, if you want to add a link, right? You can do all this stuff. YouTube, if you're using bomb, bomb, all that kind of stuff. But I want to be clear with these subject lines, because sometimes these subject lines, you need to have more of a papow, right? You need, it needs to be maybe more of a wow subject line. So I want you to kind of look at these subject lines. You can turn it on and set it and forget it, but why do that if, if there's something in here that you don't like the verbiage? If you don't like the verbiage, just change it. You know, just like any other email. I also want you to look 
at when they're going out. So this one is going to, after you turn it on, it's going to wait 20 minutes. It's going to go out with an auto email. And then immediately it's going to send an auto text to those leads, right? That meet the criteria. So that's kind of cool, right? So you get them twice. So that's kind of cool. But you may start looking down here and say, hey, you know what? I don't want step six. I don't want that. I don't want it at all. Well, maybe you just go over and you just delete it. So you certainly can delete it and then all the other steps will move up. And then you only have eight steps. Maybe you say, um, I wanna keep step six, but between, between this email and this email, I don't want it to go for five days. I, act, I don't wanna bombard too much. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it go 10 days. So again, it keeps you in control because some of these smart plans that you want to nurture, you may just want to have one email going out a month so you don't bombard. So you get to decide what you want to do. You can change everything here. And then when you are done, you can go ahead and you can, um, you can save it, right? And like I said, it'll stop you. Oh, yeah. I've got some things that are empty in here. So it'll stop you just like that and say, hey, you need to fill in, you know, you need to fill in a section or, you know, you need to do this or you need to do that. I can't see where my, where I need to, where I need to fill in. Oh, here we go. At times, you can also then have it change the pipeline, right? So if it says, hey, if I go through all these steps and at the end, they're not responding, I'm going to change the pipeline. So then I'm automatically going to move them, you know, I'm going to move them to a different, you know, to a different pipeline, whatever that pipeline is. So, so it, like I said, it'll stop you. And then I can go, again, it's going to go into, just so I can find it a little bit easier there. I just search for it because I have so many in here. And then there it is. And then when I'm ready, right from the inside of it, I will go ahead, you know, I will import it. And then I would go ahead and turn it on. Any questions on that? I will outline in the deck for you that I would like everyone to consider having a holiday uh, smart plan to go out to your people. I would, I would love for you to have a um, um, maybe just one that's a checking in. You know, I'd like for you to target your pipeline, like your nurture pipeline, again, for those holiday ones. If you don't want to create it, we've already created some of them for you. They're already ready to go. You can build your own. I, I have some uh, clients that they, they do every single holiday. I have a client that sends out uh, for Veterans Day. They send out an email and they send out a text. Make sure you thank those for their service. And um, actually in my entire book, she's the only one that does that. So I can see that that kind of makes her stand apart. If you do not want to use these smart plans to send out in mass, you can send them out individually. So again, you are customizing, you're customizing your people, right? So if I go to, you know, Bailey over here and I open up her lead profile, that's where this smart plan comes into play. So, you know, I would have set a smart plan for her here. And I can just go in and I can pick what I want and then I can start it. So I can do that as well. I can do that individually. So what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to, to have yourself come into your system as a lead. You can go in and you can make a note for yourself, you know, that says, hey, this is a test. Right. And then um, I'd like for you to kind of play with um, making yourself uh, a smart plan. So you can see the kind of emails that you're going to get. And I think that might make you feel a little bit more comfortable and then sending it out more in a, in a mass sense. So that's going to conclude this portion of it. What questions do we have? It's a lot to take in. Um, I will make sure, like I said, in the deck that you see this. I'm going to show you some creative ways that uh, uh, 
other clients and even competitors without giving their their names or anything, but even your peers across the country, what they are doing. You know, some of them are just sending out one step smart plans, right? They're doing like this little blast. Um, some do it once a month and they just send out their marketing. Some do things that are uh, just introducing themselves and saying that they're experts in certain neighborhoods, right? And they've been in that neighborhood for years. So if you don't want to use the library, like I said, you can go ahead and you can customize, you know, for yourself. And if it's something that, um, you know, you want me to take a look at or what have you, you know, you're certainly welcome to, to uh, send it to Cherise. She'll send it to me and I can take a look at it. If you need some help, we'll certainly help you. But try to test this first with yourself, and then you'll feel more comfortable. All right. Cherise, what are your thoughts? I think this is great stuff. Um, I know we have eight people on. We had nine mm -hmm. at one point, but I am going to send it to everyone that signed up to chat oh, with Chime. Yeah. Um, we just signed up. I want to say we're signing up at least two to three people weekly. Yes. Um, so this is great. This is great. If anyone doesn't have any questions, um, you guys, this is great information. I will send it out within an email once Megan sends me the recording so you guys can have it. I know it's a lot of information. It is a lot Hi. of information. I do have a question. Yes. It doesn't have to do with the smart plan at all. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I don't have the ability to delete a lead. The ability so to I just don't have the option. Yes. So at times we turn this off, right, from an administrative function. So I'm going to encourage you to do this. Really, here, here's, the, here's the honest truth. Deleting leads in a system, sometimes what we want to delete um, may mean something to the actual brokerage itself because leads need to be counted in terms, especially if you're paying for them, for sources. Mm -hmm. So if we're paying for, you know, maybe the brokerage gifts you leads or even yourself, if you are paying for leads, you need to see your return on investment and you will not be able to see that if you have them deleted. So that soul is a very, very good point because as you go into your people's page here, mm -hmm. look at this filter, right? This is why I'm so hardcore on filters. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if I go in and I look at this and I see my, my uh, Zillow leads, right? I'm going to be able to see like what closed, right? And I'm going to mm -hmm. be able to look at them over a span of time and say, hey, you know, I'm spending all this money for this particular source and I'm not getting a return on it. I'm spending all this money on Facebook and I'm not getting anything. Maybe I need to reevaluate what I'm spending. So please, please, please don't delete. If you feel like you need to delete, just, you know, make a case, go to your, go to your admin and say, hey, I really would like to delete this. Yeah, because I really have a lot of like um, bad leads and also a lot of like incomplete leads, um, mm -hmm. leads that I bring from another platforms that I have paid for it, many of them, many of them, yeah. but also these people that either is not interested or they gave like fake phone numbers when they just sure. maybe uh, came through a, an ad from one of my listings. And I just don't want to have them in my system because it's a waste of time and a space having them. And I tag them as a bad lead, but I just don't want to have them. Right. And you, you may, I'm not looking at your pipeline because this is mine. You may have a mm -hmm. do not contact. Yeah. Or you may have a lot of the times there's like something called bad leads or do not contact. I'm telling you, throw them in there because you really do want to keep a count and you may never just go in there. That's fine. They're not going to show up. They're just going to be in there, but you really do want to take a look at who you have to, to see and have them stack up. I have agents all the time that say, oh, I don't want to run, I don't want to run paid leads anymore because they're all bad, right? And then I say, oh, okay, can, uh, I don't see any in, in here. Can you move them in there? And then when they move them in there, they're surprised to see like maybe they have five. So maybe in the beginning, because you're used, if you could do this for me, if you could maybe just take my professional uh, opinion, mm -hmm. move them into, move them into the pipeline, let them sit. If you're still hating it after like, give yourself a quarter, right? Give yourself 90 days. Mm -hmm. If you're still hating it, it bugs you. Go on out, go to Sharice and say, hey, this is bugging me. This is why. And then you guys can make a plan from there. Can you do that? Yeah, sure. I have hundreds of leads that came through rentals. I just don't mm -hmm. do rentals and they came with no email. So I just don't do anything with them. There. Right, right. And, and they have hundreds, maybe sure. 150, 175. 
Sure. Well, I think you'll see, I think you'll see, um, you know, in my smart plans too, like maybe someone doesn't, doesn't have an email, right. But they have a phone number. Um, and maybe, you know, you'll see in my smart plans, I, I have some agents that, you know, they just send texts. So maybe they say, Hey, you know, I don't have your email, uh, but I've got your text, right. You know, I've got your phone mm -hmm. number. Sometimes they, you know, they click on right here and then they send a, a mass text. Now, again, that no, it's not a group text, so they're not going to see, right. Yeah. They're not going to see. So they won't see there. Another thing that you can do is when you're in here, here's my, here's my lovely filter. If you go to the contact info, look at this email addresses. I want to see everyone that does not yeah. have an email. Oh, yeah. So you can whittle it down just in the beginning. I want you to kind of save everything. And then if you want, if you want, you can reach out to me. And if you're like, hey, I want you to take a look at my CRM. Mm -hmm. oh, let's see what we got. Let's talk about it. And let's figure out, you know, I might find something in there. It's like, did you see this? They're going back <laughs> to the site. Like they're going back. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> can we do that? Yeah. Okay. We'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll try it. And again, go, come back to me and I will look at this. We'll look at it Thank together. You, I will. You're very welcome. Thank you. What else? All right. Well, like Sheree said, I will get that out. I'll get it all put together. Um, reach out if there's any additional questions. We will do um, some other trainings here in the future. At some po point, I'm going to want to pulse check everyone um, via Sharice, and I'll give you like a little uh, survey to fill out that says, what do you want to learn? If you want to go back through something, we're just going to go back through it. If you want me to pull your CRM up and you want to use, you know, maybe yourself as example or do that together, we certainly can, we certainly can do that. We want you to be happy and we do send surveys out that ask, you know, are you happy? Um, but if you're not attending any trainings, you know, like you all are, are making the effort, um, then, you know, you're not going to get the, you're not going to get the results that you want. We want you to have results and I'm here for you. <laughs>